everyone, Christian Knight here for Car Player TV, reporting from the Penn and Teller Theater for the World Series of Poker main event final table. The seventh place finisher is the great Phil Ivey. He was all in preflop with Ace King against Darvin Moon's Ace Queen. Darvin hit a queen and Ivey went out. He received 1.4 million for his efforts. On sixth place is Steven Begleiter. He had pocket queens all in preflop, also against Darvin Moon's ace queen. An ace came on the river, and Steve Begladder is out in sixth. We spoke to him just after he was eliminated. I'm a little numb, obviously. I mean, I, uh, I uh, obviously would have liked to have won that pot, but um, I, I got a bit of a smile on my face. I mean, what else can I do? I got my money in really good, and I was one card away from being right back in the thick of it. You know, I played some hands well tonight. I played some hands poorly tonight. I had a great time. A lot of fun. I was really like the once we got back from the dinner break. I was really into this. I really thought that hand was mine. I thought, but it just wasn't meant to be. But that's the game. Plenty of guys get rivered, and I, uh, uh, in, a, in a in a way, going out like that to me is actually easier than you know making some horrendous play and ending up with three million chips and having to push with nothing. So that was my fate, and uh, uh, I got a wealthy man. I got a great family. I had a great experience here. And I'm gonna try like heck to get back here again. What do you think of Moon as a player? Darwin Moon's a good player. I mean, they're all good players. They're no bad players out there. I mean, you know, he's a very good player. Um, he's figured out how to hold on to most of his chips, and he's got mine now, so he's probably back to where he started. And um, he's gonna be a factor. It's gonna be very interesting. When you look back now on that hand where you made the call with the uh, eight second pair against the two overs in the flush rod, do you consider that a mistake? Um, I consider a mistake calling the re-raise, and I definitely consider calling a mistake betting the turn. I think while it was a lot of chips, I was getting about 2.4 to 1, and turns out I was like almost an even money favorite. I know it's for a lot of chips, but I had, you know, I mean, you get two and a half to 1, you're even money favorite. And I played with Antoine. We had, it was actually a replay of an earlier hand we had, you know, and I, I thought he had ace king or ace queen again. I didn't realize he had hearts, but if he did, I, knew, I figured I would still be 50-50. And uh, I mean, if I win that hand, I got 75 million chips. I came to win this thing, you know? And um, I thought I could build back if it didn't work out. I'm still only one double up away from being back in the tournament. So I feel like I came and I, that, I, I'm not happy with how I played that hand. I just should have folded to his re-raise. But, you know, I'm a no-play. I took a shot and I still had a chance to get back in it. No ace comes there. You know, I might be playing until four in the morning. You've received some criticism after the ESPN coverage from poker fans out there. Do you feel a bit vindicated now after your performance here? I don't really care how people, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't play perfect, but I don't think anybody does. Um, of course, the 2,000 hands or whatever I played, I'm sure I made some mistakes. I did some good, I mean, I'm very happy with my play. How do you think Ivy played? What? I'm not going to talk about how he played there. Steven, you made a real effort to try to get better over the delay, hiring a coach. How do you rate yourself as a player now as opposed to three or four months ago? Well, let me just say something about that. I worked with two people, right? And uh, I worked with John Little and Alon Schwartz. And um, they were both tremendous. John Little, in particular, I spent more time with him. You know, he's 24 years old. He's very mature. He's an excellent teacher. He's an excellent player. He dedicated himself to me. He's the defending champion at the Foxwoods WPT, which is being played today, and he's here sweating me. Um, I don't have enough good things to say, and I would, for the poker world out there, you make the final table, put John Little on your short list of coaches. Alon Schwartz, I think I'd spend as much time with. His help was indispensable, his final table experience. He's got one of the best poker, he's just so intelligent. He's got such a deep understanding of the game. Getting a chance to like study with these two guys, I. I I think I'm a lot better, and that re-raise with the seven eight of clubs is 100 percent on me. It's not on them. Okay. What's your poker future? Uh, you got to ask my wife that, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'll be at the main event, you know, as long as I still got my marbles every year. I hope. Um, beyond that, you know, I gotta, I gotta see. I mean, I got a, I got a job and a family, and you know. I'll probably play more poker than I have before, but uh, I don't really know. Now, Steve, you're used to dealing with high finance, and you're used to financial swings. You know what it's all about. How does the emotion of sitting there in those lights, hearing the thousands of people screaming, how does that emotional roller coaster compare with what you've done for a living in the past? Well, you know, I, I think what I did for the past to help prepare me. I mean, I really was, I thought I'd be incredibly nervous today. I really wasn't that nervous. Maybe part of it's the long wait and stuff like that. It sort of get wings out of you. But I speak in front of large groups and I present to CEOs and it's like I've, I've got enough experience being in big, you know, tight spots 
this really didn't bother me. I was really not nervous. Um, um, you know, even if I don't miss play that seven eight of clubs in, I still probably lose forty million chips to Darvin with the Queens versus Ace Queen there, you know, and I'm crippled. So I don't I'm not really gonna have a lot of regrets. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased with the way I, I I handled myself and the way I, you know, made most of my decisions. I don't know. I got I got a smile on my face. Are you rooting for any player left? I'm rooting for them all. Uh, the guy I really rooting for, Kevin Chappell, he got knocked out. We're gonna have a lot to you know, we, we got we got some good beat stories there, okay? We'll be talking about for a while, Can okay? Can you talk about your friendship with Kevin Chappell, how that developed and I mean, well, I've, talk, I've, I've talked about it a lot. I just say he's a class act. A lot of, there's a lot of class acts around that final table, okay? He's just a guy happened to me. We're the same age, and, you know, we really hit it off, and he's a class act. And um, uh, I wish him well. You know, he's, he's a very good player. He's got a much better chance of being back here than I do. Steve, you're the only one with a, an Asian name Patch on. How did that come about? Oh, this? Yeah. Oh, well, I got a, a good friend, uh, who's been, you know, he was out at day seven and eight, you saw him on TV, Greg Hammerschlag, and he's been turning over every stone to get me a high quality uh, second endorsement. And um, I think we broke a little bit of ground uh, for poker in that regard. And uh, maybe next year you'll see two or three guys wearing stuff like this. Was it great to be surrounded by family and friends during this whole experience? Yeah, I mean, I got all those people over there and, you know. Where are you off uh, to another, now? Uh, where am I off to now? Drinks or dinner? Or yeah, I want to go somewhere and cry a little bit and then you know, go, go like drink for a long time. See my kids. I really want to see my kids.